Number nine, if the air gap is in question, then it is likely that you will be required to install, then the question is what? A regulator, a check valve, a filter, a thermal brake. So this is one of those terms that you would need to recognize to really know what we're talking about here, the air gap. And an air gap is something that essentially nobody cares about except uh, the municipal water uh, department. And they are a very, uh, they think it's like the most important thing. And it is in this big scale thing. Because the air gap is the way that we protect our water systems, our municipal water systems, from whatever uh, contamination uh, somebody might have in their sink. Um, so remember that sink we were looking at earlier? We've got our drain down here, it's got the trap and it goes down, has the vent line going up. I've got uh, my faucet coming over here. Um, and I fill that uh, sink up with water and that right there is my air gap. That's the spot where the contamination from whatever you have in your sink, because who knows what's in that sink. Maybe it's a laboratory sink. Maybe it's uh, um, uh, you know, some bacteria on some old food or something. Um, whatever that contamination is, it's not going to be able to leap up and into that faucet and therefore contaminate the water that's in there, which could conceivably contaminate all the way back uh, to the water main in the street. So the air gap is the idea that you don't want to let the, the supply portion get near any of this. Con once it's considered wastewater, once it's out, you know, out of the system, it's considered considered contaminated because uh, who knows what's in it. Uh, so the air gap is keeping those things separate. So then, okay. What about, let's say I have this as a kitchen sink, and you probably, many of you probably have one of those little hand sprayers. It's on like a flexible little device that uh, you can spray off. It's got a little thing. Well, what if you drop that right in the sink? Like, wouldn't that be making it so there's no air gap? And the answer is yes, that would be making it so there's no air gap. And the only way that you would be able to do that is as part of this device, I would have to have a check valve. So a check valve, is somewhere in that pipe, there's going to be a little device, uh, and that device is going to be set up a little swinging door, if you will. And when the water is going this way, that water goes right on through. But if for some reason there's suction and it starts pulling the water the other direction, and that actually happens fairly regularly. Imagine that. Uh, uh, a fire truck pulls up next door to your, your building and there's a house on fire down the block and they're pumping all this water out of the fire hydrant. Well, suddenly that whole neighborhood, the pressure completely changes in the whole neighborhood because they're pulling this huge amount of water out all at once. Uh, so you could very easily suddenly get a negative pressure inside a, a building that's near that. And there's other reasons why it might happen as well. Um, so suddenly I have this water going the other direction. Well, instead of that door just naturally pushing open, it actually is going to push that door closed. And it's going to, just by the flow of the water, going to be a way to stop the, what's now contaminated water over here from getting into the main system over there. Uh, regulators, filters, thermal brakes, those are all good things to think about, but they don't have anything to do with air gap. How about the backflow prevention device? Yeah, there's a number of different backflow preventers. Um, the, uh, the other ones would be a little, like there's RPZs, uh, a reduced um, pressure zone. Uh, there's um, vacuum breakers. There's a whole series of other uh, sort of valve types that uh, would, would do this same thing. Um, none of those happen to be listed, so the check valve is just the simple, easiest one to answer. But yeah, any of those would be used. Those tend to be used um, like a RPZ, which is very expensive and kind of big and clunky. They're kind of crazy looking. They're really worth looking up because they're sort of wacky looking. Um, they use uh, this uh, kind of z uh, vacuum zone so that the, the water would have to leap across this vacuum. Uh, and instead, uh, it allows air to get in uh, to replace it so it just doesn't suck the water through. Um, and those are often used in like irrigation systems. Um, so that's the RPZs. Um, uh, so, like, because uh, that could, the 
water officials just hate irrigation systems because they're very, very nervous that there's going to be like who knows what kind of contaminants are out there uh, and how it's you know like a hose sitting in a puddle. Uh, you know, all of that is a is a huge potential problem. So RPZs would be for big scenarios. Um, the vacuum breakers would be for like a household hose because it's you don't have as much worry. It's not used as much. Um, so be a different situation, but absolutely. Yeah, that's a really good question.